All right, so I didn't want to make a video like this ever, but this is why I'm never going back to Fountain Blue. I felt disrespected and threatened. Now I'm going to explain that I have some culpability in all this, but I want to explain how I think I was 86 for life anyways. So even if I wanted to go back, I couldn't, but this is my thoughts on Fountain Blue and why they are screwing everything up so incredibly hardcore and how they might be able to fix it, but they're not listening to me. They're not listening to you. All they want is the elites in the world. And I have, oh, elitism is disgusting to me. So we're gonna have some thoughts. Uh, my name is Steven. I'm gonna explain the incident in a moment and why I'm never going back, not against against my own will. It's not because I don't wanna go back, but um, you know, and I'm not leaving Las Vegas. I've been doing a Vegas YouTube channel since 2019. Now, January 1st, 2019 is when I really started doing videos on YouTube. And at that time, I have done hundreds, if not a thousand live streams. And during that time, I've always been the one that has learned the rules and then told people we don't go into that property because they don't like us filming. Like that is literally what I do. Okay. So I know the rules and I tried to respect them. What happened at Fountain Blue on Friday, the March 21st was like taking a sledgehammer to a beautiful wall full of gallery portraits because you had a little tiny finishing nail to hold up one so they're perfectly straight. Instead of using a little tiny hammer to deal with the problem, you took a 75 pound sledgehammer and you swung it as hard as you could to prove your point because you were so tired of messing around with that gallery wall and that little nail and that stupid picture that you needed to just put the hammer down quite literally on this. So I felt disrespected, I felt somewhat threatened, but we're gonna get to the incident after I give you a little bit of context, okay? So, in all the time I've been doing these live streams, I've encountered dozens of experiences with guards, maybe even more. And the guards experience usually goes like this. The guard sees you, they come up, they ask if you're filming, you say you're live streaming, they say you can't do that. You say, oh, I'm very sorry, I like that you told me the rules. Hey, am I allowed to go there where that attraction is? They might say yes or no. And then if they say no, you say, okay, well, I'd like to leave. Where's the closest exit? And then you explain to your audience that you're going to put your camera, aim it to the floor so you can leave and nothing ever comes out of it. They do not demand your ID like Fountain Blue did with me. They don't try to block you like Fountain Blue did with me. And they treat you with respect, unlike what Fountain Blue did with me. Now, I will take some culpability on Fountain Blue's interaction with me. They might have just been pissed off at me in particular. You see, I tell you the truth. I don't sugarcoat things. I'm not auditioning for a, a role with the casino. I reached out to Fountain Blue about a month ago and asked if they wanted to work with me and I could show my audience. They never got back to me. That's their prerogative. They don't care about me or any other YouTubers. I think they just mainly want to have, you know, big celebrities come through and they want to link up with those celebrities. I don't think that we have any value. But here's what this is. I did a video on Fountain Blue. Live streamed in there before several times. Never had a problem. We would pass guards. They'd look us in the eyes. They'd be nice to us. I did a video on the Peking Duck being way expensive. I made a YouTube short. And then on Friday, I went back to explore, as the title of my video at the time said, the $3.7 billion failure financially in the desert. And uh, But I, I was asked to go back and give it a second chance. So I thought I would. And while we were doing that, by the way, you should subscribe to this channel so you can see my live streams and uh, it would make me feel better about the whole incident if you want to subscribe. We do live streams like nobody else over here. We go off the strip, we show you stuff and that's weird, quirky, sometimes dangerous. And uh, we're going to show you the real Vegas. That's my whole MO and I'm going to be the real truth, not the fake news. So subscribe if you want to see more of these types of streams. And so when we went back this time, we were exploring the property. Again, guards looking at us. Nobody seems to be carrying anything that I'm in there. And then we're going up to the uh, up to the convention center. We went up, 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 all the way to the fifth floor. And then as we were coming down, I was basically on a one-way stream all the way to where this guy was. He comes in, he flanks me. I have the video. You guys can actually see it right now. I'm telling you, dude, if I was a 27-year-old girl, I'd have 10 million followers. Be like, hi guys, we're doing a makeup tutorial. Hi. Oh, you want me to leave? I'll just leave. No, you want ID? No, I'm not gonna give you my ID. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna walk out this door. Okay, and don't come back. Okay, thank you, sir. Come back. So we're being 86 from the Fountain Blue because he demanded to see my ID. So there you have it, kids. Yeah. Uh, 86 out of the fountain blue without being 86 out of the fountain blue so that's the incident and it's the amount of disrespect and that's what i don't understand and that's what really 
When people ask me about these properties and these Fountain Blue property in particular, I'd say my whole summary about this, even before this incident, was that Fountain Blue is an elites. They're elites and they don't care. They, they hate you. They have disdain for you. Maybe. I don't know. They, I feel like they don't like the regular person. And this is something that I really bothers me. It really bugs me when anybody, be it a politician or a company or just a rich guy driving in a nicer car or somebody's in a lineup and they look down on you like, hey, you're close. Look at you. I don't like that. And that's where I think this is heading with Fountain Blue. See, let me explain that a little bit further, okay? So Fountain Blue, I wanted so hard for this to succeed. And this hurts so much more because, mm, sorry, because I, I saw across the street watching this place be constructed back in 2007. I, I've worked on the strip for 13 years, never been 86. But in particular, this one here hurts because I... It's 2007, I watched this property break ground. I love architecture, I love buildings. These renderings look amazing. And then 2008 comes, I think it was, and then the financial crisis, and boom, it gets canceled. And it sits for 14, 15 years in the desert until it finally gets rebooted. I was looking forward to this property and to be kicked out of it when I was like rooting for it so hard, that's a personal thing to me. That's, that's in me, I gotta pray on that one. So uh, yeah, Fountain Blue, if you're going to be elites, though, that's the main thing. That's why I don't know that I would probably make my way for me personally to the property. Because here's the thing. When you go into Fountain Blue, yes, it's very nice. But there are so many things in working against it. They are deciding that they're not going to understand the Vegas marketplace. And this is what matters to you right now. So you can perk your ears up and, and just know this might matter to you. See, every market is a little bit different. SLS, which is a company that came in, quick story for you, from LA, uh, bought the tower and branded the tower at Sahara years ago. And they failed. They failed because they didn't understand the Vegas market. And now Fountain Blue came here from Miami and they spent $2.2 .2 billion of new financing and uh, to finish off this property. And I think that they're failing at that because they don't understand the Vegas market. Now, the Vegas market is like this. You might be a big, huge shark where you're from, if you're the biggest in Miami, you're one of the bigger ones in LA and you have celebrities that are constantly filling it up and taking celebrity photos and you're getting all your free publicity and then all the rich people come, and that's cool too. But you're not a big shark in Vegas. You're not. You're, you're actually in an ocean right now and you're like finding Nemo in this ocean. You got to play with what the ocean is going to, what the rules of the ocean, okay? So in Vegas, you need to have a value proposition. The Wynn, the Encore, Caesars Palace, Bellagio, they all offer something for the common person to come in. And when the common person like you and me go into these properties, Wynn, Bellagio, Caesars Palace, Venetian, they see something really cool. They find a, a, a slot machine with a dollar spin or a 50 cent spin, and they put some money into the machine. They find a table that's 10 or $15 limits. And the table minimums of Fountain Blue are much higher. And they might drop 100 bucks. They might drop 50 bucks. But these properties are successful because they have a draw to bring a person to the property. Maybe it's a killer restaurant. Maybe it's a feature like the atrium at the Bellagio. Maybe it's something like the gondola rides at the Venetian. Once the people are there, let them spend money. There's two types of economics here. You can make a million dollars selling one thing with a million dollar profit margin, or you can sell, make a million dollars by selling a million things with a dollar profit margin. Either way, you're going to make your money. But Fountain Blue decided to go with the elitist status. We just want the money of $5,000 stays from Beyonce and Jay-Z because they have $5,000 rooms and they're bragging about that. We just want to have the high rollers from Venetian, Palazzo and all these properties come over to us because we're Fountain Blue and we're known for luxury. In Florida, you're known for luxury. In Vegas, who are you? You don't have much of an identity and you haven't carved that out yet. OK, now, when you don't have a bunch of rabid fans that are gamblers that will come to your casino because you've never run a casino before, you have to go and create that value proposition to bring people to your casino. Right now, you don't have much of a value proposition to bring people there. So you're banking on what conventions and whales to come into your property. And that might be well and good. But it's a giant, huge property. Why don't you actually welcome people into the property? And I'm not talking about bloggers and poor me or anything like that. Why don't you welcome people in? Why don't you give them something of value for showing up? Why didn't you build something to make people come off the strip? Let me explain. Quick story. I used to work in timeshare marketing. And I would stand on Harmon, which is the planet Hollywood. 
and we would have people come up to us and say, which way to the hard rock? I say, oh, did you want to buy a hamburger? Or do you want to go see the memorabilia? They said, I want to see the memorabilia. They would go all the way about three miles, two miles walk all the way down Harmon through the bad neighborhood just to see the memorabilia at the Hard Rock Hotel. And guess what they would do? They would drop a few bucks. Yeah, they would gamble a little bit. Now the Venetian, uh, the Virgin is down there and they don't have much of a draw. But, you know, they try. They got Wu-Tang Clan. They got concerts. They got conventions that come through. So you don't see it, Fountain Blue. You don't see it because you want elites to come through. So when it comes to bloggers, you can just kick them out. And before you guys mention it, because some of you guys are already saying, well, XYZ blogger I watch and this other blogger I watch, they've never had any problems. They must be targeting you. Sure, maybe they were targeting me because I tell the truth, which is why you should subscribe to the channel. But at the same time, I was there several streams in a row and nothing happened. So I think they just don't like streamers. They don't like the fact that the casino is empty. They've lost six different executives since they opened. They've had so many people move in and out of the system. There, when there's too many people in control, you don't have enough people that are actually working the, to steer the ship. When you have everybody yelling about which direction the ship should be going in, and then people are quitting and you're bringing in new people, it's hard to get on a straight path. So they just probably don't want people seeing that the casino is an empty tomb right now for the most part. So they're willing to go ahead and kick people out. And even though it means that a thousand people who watched that live stream at that moment now know how they treated me. And <laughs> now we have this video going up. I mean, like, I'm not here to see things fail in Vegas, but that's elitism. Don't want to be an elitist in Vegas. You have to welcome everybody through the doors. You have to have something for everybody in Vegas. And you know what? The problem is you are living up like you're on the wind territory when you're across the street from Circus Circus and you're a few doors down from a Denny's and a Ross dress for less. And you got nothing on the north end except the world's largest gift shop. So I don't know what they're thinking. You got no foot traffic. You got no draw. You don't have another elite property except for maybe Resorts World across the street. And even then, Resorts World, they're still trying to find their identity in a weird market in Vegas. So those are my thoughts on Fountain Blue, why I'm not going back, because I'm pretty sure I was banned for life. And I'm not going to go and test the needle and see if they're going to let me through because I'd prefer not to end up in handcuffs and booked at the Clark County Detention Center because they certainly, most certainly have my face on a scan. And uh, it's unfortunate and it's sad. And I guess that when we want luxury, we're just going to have to go to either Caesars Palace, Bellagio, Wynn, Encore, Venetian, Palazzo, or Mandalay Bay. Seven choices for me and my family. What's your choice? Are you going to end up at this place? Are you going to go check it out? Do you think that, you know, they are treating people the right way? Or do you think that it's a little bit of elitism? Or am I completely right or am I completely wrong? You let me know in the comments below. I love every single one of you guys for watching as I get this out of my system. And uh, yeah, if you guys, uh, if you guys want to subscribe, you should. You're going to see some amazing videos that we do, like like super amazing stuff. You're going to love it. And uh, my name is Steven. I'm not leaving Las Vegas. we got to say three, two, one, click. Are you ready? Three, two, one, and click. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching. If you guys want to watch another video that YouTube is recommending for you, go ahead and click here. And if you want to see the Fountain Blue video, it's also on the screen. And there's a timestamp in the comment on that video to where the incident happened. You can also go ahead and subscribe. And we'll see you in another video later. Thanks.